Hello everyone. I am delighted to welcome you to this insightful podcast with a distinguished neuro-oncologist, Dr. Gopal Sharma. Today we embark on a journey to explore the complexities surrounding bladder cancer, a disease that affects millions of lives worldwide. It ranks as the 10th most commonly diagnosed cancer characterized by the highest recurrence rate among all malignancies. The incidence of bladder cancer is twice as high in developing countries compared to developed countries. Let's delve into this topic through a series of engaging questions exploring various aspects of bladder cancer, diagnosis and treatment. Our esteemed guest will share his expertise on everything from the most frequently observed types of bladder cancer to the cutting edge therapies that offer hope to patients facing this challenging adversary. So welcome Dr. Gopal. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. Pleasure is mine and thank you very much for kind introduction. Yeah, thank you doctor. So without any further ado, let's begin our discussion. So, uh, Dr. Gopal, can you please enlighten us on which type of bladder cancer is most frequently observed among patients? So, uh, first of all, bladder cancer is a cancer which arises from the inner lining of the bladder. And uh, the most common cancer for bladder cancer is transitional cell cancer. And there are other various rare type of cancer, I would say, which are less than 5 to 10 percent, which are uh, at least in India. Other ty- second most frequent type is squamous cell carcinoma and uh, third most common type is adenocarcinoma and there are other very rare types of cancers which are called neuroendocrine tumors and mixed sort of tumors or poorly differentiated tumors. Yeah, so now Dr. Gopal, uh, there are some important uh, risk factors like smoking, certain infections and occupational exposure to particular chemicals. But are there any modifiable risk factors? As you correctly pointed out, the most common important, most important and commonest factor found with bladder cancer, which is found in more than 50% of the patients is smoking. And uh, smoking is one of the most important modifiable factor. The other factors are industrial exposure to uh, aromatic amines or hydrocarbons, which are commonly seen in dye industry, paint industry, rubber industry, petroleum industry, these are also, these were classically believed to be an important risk factor. And uh, there are other uh, risk factors for other, uh, uh, and mind you, these two risk factors are important risk factors for transitional cell cancers. There are some other risk factors for uh, squamous cell carcinoma of bladder, which are not, maybe not common in our country. First is uh, uh, bladder infestation with cystosomiasis, which is more common in uh, Mediterranean countries such as Egypt. And there are other risk factors such as chronic stone or chronic urinary tract infection, which leads to this type of uh, bladder cancer. So yes, uh, one of the most important modifiable risk factor is uh, smoking. But uh, 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 smoking not is not only related to the increased risk, but it is also related to the recurrence of the disease. If once you have this disease, if you don't, if you don't stop smoking, you will have increased chances of recurrences. And uh, uh, the the smoking, the risk of uh, disease uh, reduces with the increasing duration of smoking cessation. Yeah, uh, doctor. Let's now uh, shift our focus to the approach of its management. So, uh, what is your approach to assessing a patient who is suspected of having bladder cancer or presents with symptoms indicative of the condition? Yeah, so the most common symptom a patient uh, could have is a blood in urine or hematuria and some patients may have unrelated symptoms such as lower urinary tract symptoms, mainly irritative or voiding symptoms. and. Uh, Evaluation of a uh, patient with a uh, hematuria or blood in urine should be complete and should involve complete evaluation of lower tract as well as upper tract. So for a patient with hematuria, what we usually do is we do a CECT urogram to evaluate upper tracts that is kidney and ureters. And uh, we also do urine for malignant cytology to look for 
uh, cells which have been shed into the urine and the la- last but most important thing is to do cystoscopy and it is a dictum that even if any of these uh, investigation finds any abnormality the complete set of tests needs to be done for example if there is a, a problem noted in the kidneys on ct urogram it is it should be followed by a uh, flexible cystoscopy or cystoscopy should be done in that case so complete spectrum of tests should be done and the management protocol depends upon what is the what is the finding in that uh, investigation now the most common finding would be a uh, bladder mass would be noted on uh, cystoscopy in a patient since we are talking about bladder cancer so what we then we usually we plan and work up and counsel the patient for a uh, transurethral resection of bladder tumor it is uh, uh, basically a surgery in which uh, which is done transurethrally and uh, which uh, we in which we resect the tumor and completely if possible resect the tumor and take the deep biopsies and uh, we wait for the histopathology specimen to come it is not only a diagnostic and it is many times a therapeutic procedure and depending upon the histopathology report the further tests are done yeah thank you doctor for providing your insights now what is the first surgical procedure you do to stage and grade bladder cancer what information you are looking for from that so yes so uh, this is a very pertinent question in cases of bladder cancer so the first procedure surgical procedure we do is as i have previously mentioned we do is a trbt which is called transurethral resection of bladder tumor in this surgery we resect the bladder and we resect the bladder tumor completely if possible and we take a deep biopsy so the important information in the histopathology specimen after surgery which we are looking for is first which type of tumor it is second what is the grade of tumor third what is the level of extension of this tumor into the layers of the bladder whether it is invading the lamina propria or it is invading the deep muscles because uh, these questions will determine further treatment steps which are required for this these sort of patients and management is different for each patient depending upon the level of invasion and the grade of tumor uh, so doctor when do you give intraoperative mitomycin c okay so mitomycin c is basically a chemotherapy which is given uh post operatively and it needs to be given preferably within 6 hours of uh transurethral resection of bladder tumor and it is generally restricted to patients with a uh, low risk or low grade of disease and for example it 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 is preferably or it is advisable to give intraoperative or post operative mitomycin in patients who have a single tumor less than 3 cm in size and in which we feel the complete resection has been done and uh, we feel that mitomycin is safe to be given for example if the resection area is very large or we feel that there are chances of deep resection into the bladder then generally we avoid it otherwise in every low risk uh, feature tumor it this should be given okay now let's uh, talk about the treatment options the treatment for all <coughs> cancer largely depends on how advanced the cancer is and is usually differs from uh, between early stage and more advanced stage so doctor how does your treatment vary if the biopsy is a non muscle invasive bladder cancer yes this is a very good question i would say uh, uh, depending upon what is the uh, grade and what is the stage so basically we have we follow certain set of guidelines uh, we commonly at our center follow european association of urology guidelines and uh, which have divided non muscle invasive bladder cancer into a uh, different types of groups which can be low intermediate or high risk groups and uh, as i have previously mentioned low risk of uh, low risk tumors are basically which are less than 3 cm single tumor and papillary sort of tumor which are not invading the deeper layers of the bladder and uh, high risk uh, tumors are multiple tum- uh, the tumors more than 3 cm in size high risk tumors or high grade tumors and which are invading into the deeper layer of the bladder which is lamina propria and other in between are intermediate for example uh, 
ट्यूमर लेस देन थ्री सेंटीमीटर बट मल्टीपल ट्यूमर सुपरफिशियल लुपिंग ट्यूमर बट मोर देन थ्री सेंटीमीटर आर समेर इन इन बिटवीन इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क ऑफ ट्यूमर्स सो फॉर लो ग्रेड ट्यूमर टी ओ आर बी टी विद पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव माइटोमाइसिन इज कम्प्लीट ट्रीटमेंट एंड दिस पेशेंट इज देन रिक्वायर्ड टू बी फॉलोड अप विद रेगुलर सिस्टोस्कोपीज फॉर फॉर पेशेंट्स विद इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क ऑफ इंटरमीडिएट रिस्क नॉन मसल इन्वेजिव ब्लैडर कैंसर पोस्ट पोस्ट सर्जरी इट इज रिकमेंडेड दैट वी गिव हिम और हर इंडक्शन फेज ऑफ बी सी जी फॉलोड बाय मेंटेनेंस फेज ऑफ बी सी जी फॉर अबाउट वन ईयर सो आई हैव मैंशन हेयर बी सी जी ओनली नॉट अदर एनी कीमोथेरेपी बिकॉज देर इज गुड डाटा दैट बी सी जी इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव ड्रग इन दिस एडजुवेंट सेटिंग इन पेशेंट्स विद मसल नॉन मसल इन्वेजिव ब्लडर कैंसर टू प्रिवेंट रिकरेंसिस एंड टू प्रिवेंट डिसीज प्रोग्रेशन एंड फॉर पेशेंट्स विद हाई ग्रेड डिसीज और हाई रिस्क डिसीज इट इज रिकमेंडेड दैट बी सी जी इज गिवन एज इंडक्शन फॉलोड बाई मेंटेनेंस अप टू थ्री ईयर्स सो इज द ट्रीटमेंट डिफरेंट फॉर मसल इन्वेजिव ब्लैडर कैंसर येस सो ट्रीटमेंट फॉर मसल इन्वेजिव ब्लैडर कैंसर इज ऑल टूगेदर now there is sufficient evidence that after adequate staging that we have proven that patient doesn't have any evidence of metastatic disease patients uh, who have muscle invasive bladder cancer on initial biopsy they should be uh, offered chemotherapy given that they are eligible and uh, we generally refer our patients with muscle invasive chemotherapy to medical oncologist to assess their eligibility for uh chemotherapy because there is now level 1 evidence that all of these patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer should be given chemotherapy first followed by surgery now uh, surgery for them the uh, surgery which should be done is radical cystectomy with a uh, type of urinary diversion which they would be eligible for so uh, muscle invasive bladder cancer uh, requires much more aggressive and intensive treatment as compared to non muscle invasive bladder cancers okay and uh, when do you suggest newer therapies such as immunotherapy for your patients with bladder cancer uh first um, i would say that the most effective treatment for even for muscle invasive or metastatic therapies given that patient is eligible for that is cisplatin based chemotherapy and generally there are new trials coming up uh, which are evaluating effectiveness of new uh, these newer therapies such as immunotherapy in the adjuvant and new adjuvant setting as of now there is no level 1 evidence or even good quality level 2 or 3 evidence is not available right now whether they are effective in patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer in new adjuvant or adjuvant setting but they this newer therapies such as uh, nivolumab as it atezolizumab do do have they do have role in metastatic uh, bladder cancer uh, where patient is not eligible for uh, primary uh, uh, primary therapy which is uh, cisplatin based or patient has disease progression on uh, primary therapy which is chemotherapy so yes they have limited role as of now in bladder cancer but there are still studies going on assessing their role in new adjuvant and adjuvant settings yeah thank you dr gopal for your comprehensive explanation and uh, as we conclude this session uh, dr gopal your insights have been truly enlightening we appreciate your time and the wealth of knowledge you have shared with us so thank you so much thank you very much thank you very much for your kind invitation looking yeah. forward for further uh, similar Uh, sort of things in future yes definitely do and uh, to our valued audience we extend our gratitude for joining us today before we bid farewell i would like you to explore our med synapse platform which provides a unique opportunity to engage in reaching discussions connect with esteemed medical professionals and contribute to the progress of healthcare Until we meet again take care and keep advancing in your medical journey I'm your host Dr Harshita signing off goodbye